everyone is moving to the place with the greatest risk of wildfire in the United States. The view from the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountain range in Southern California can be beautiful pine forests and chaparral spill across an often rugged landscape. But as more people build homes in this area, where development gets into wild land, they're facing some of the highest risks for wildfires in the country. The type of trees, plants, and grasses at any location will influence how likely the area is to burn. However, our new research shows that some areas of the wildland urban interface the land where development ends and wilderness begins are at much higher risk of burning than others. A key reason is how vulnerable the local vegetation is to drying out in a warming climate. In a study published February 7, 2022, our team of climate scientists, fire scientists and eco-hydrology SDS mapped out where vegetation is creating the highest fire risk across the western U.S. We then compared that map to where in the region people have been moving into the wild land urban interface. We were surprised to discover that the fastest rate of population growth by far has been in the areas with the highest fire risk. This includes several areas in California, Oregon, Washington, and Texas. When a fire does break out, the amount of area that burns increases significantly if a region's vegetation is drought sensitive meaning it dries up easily after periods of little rainfall and hot temperatures. We found that while the number of people living in the wild land urban interface overall roughly doubled from 1,990 to 2010, the population in its highest hazard regions grew by 160 per cent. As more people move into these areas, the opportunity for fires to ignite rises, as does the number of people at risk. In all, the population of those high hazard areas grew from 1 million in 1992 to 0.6 million in 2010, the latest year with detailed population data. That's an increase equivalent to the current populations of San Francisco and Seattle. Combined, more people still live in the low hazard regions of the wild land urban interface, where the population grew 107%, from 5 million in 1990 to 10.4 million in 2010. But the high hazard regions have seen much faster growth. We don't know what is causing the population boom in these highly sensitive areas of the western U.S. Building codes. Timber-dependent communities and people seeking homes surrounded by forests may have contributed to the expansion of the wild land urban interface. But those factors alone don't explain why population would rise the most in the most vulnerable regions. However, a map of vegetation sensitivity to water shortages can provide some insight. By linking satellite-based estimates of vegetation dryness to climate observations, we created continental-scale maps of vegetation moisture. For the first time, we now know the precise locations of the most drought-vulnerable and hence fire-prone vegetation. The map shows that the foothills of the Sierra Nevada in Southern California, the outskirts of the San Francisco Bay Area, San Diego, and San Antonio all have drought-sensitive vegetation and saw populations expand. In the wildland urban interface, the disproportionate population growth in high hazard areas, a warning that the likelihood of humans sparking a fire in an area with high risk vegetation is rising and that it m a b higher than was previously understood. Community leaders can use this knowledge to identify where human activity overlaps with drought sensitive regions to improve local land use planning, prepare firefighting resources, and develop safer evacuation routes. Property owners can keep a safe defensible space of at least a 100 feet of non vegetate land on all sides of a home to help protect their structures when wildfires occur. Retrofitting homes using fire retarding materials or double paned windows can help. 2. Preventive measures like these can limit the ballooning losses from wildfires, including devastating air quality due to wildfire smoke, while also allowing humans to more safely coexist with natural fires. Preparing homes for wildfires can take months. So it's important to use the winter, when many of these areas have their wet seasons, to be ready by the time the land dries out and wildfires ramp up in spring. Krishna Rao is a PhD candidate in Earth System Science at Stanford University. Alexandra Koning S. is an assistant professor of Earth System Science at Stanford University. Marty Yebra is an associate professor at Australian National University. Noah Diffin Ball is a professor of Earth System Science at Stanford University and Park Williams is an associate professor of hydroclimatology at the University of California, Los Angeles. This article is republished from the conversation under a Creative Commons license. Read the original article.